What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be stealth camping next to a quarry and it's currently around seven o'clock. So there's only about an hour and a half left of daylight. There is a family that have just gone down the public footpath that I'm basically gonna be going down in a second in order to get to the woodland where I'll be camping. So I thought I'd make a quick video and put some distance between us. I'm also going to be cooking tonight as well. So the plan is to get up there as quick as I can, get the cooking sorted, get the tent set up and do all that hopefully before it goes dark. So let's go. So this is a woodland that I'm going to be going into in a sec. I've just passed that family on the way down the path, but they were really nice, so shouldn't be a problem. But then I've just noticed that there is an old man that's walking down the path, seems to be on his own. Um, he's pretty slow though, so shouldn't be anything to worry about because the woodland's pretty big once you get inside, so I'm gonna speed up a bit as soon as I go in. You can also go that way as well, but I'm going to be going this way, so you won't know which way I've gone. I'm going to hoof it up now to the top of the hills, just so by the time he gets down here, I'm long gone. Every time I come camping, I always end up around Holly. I'm basically in a field of it at the moment, which I'll show you in a sec. But yeah, I'm looking forward to getting to camp now and cracking open a nice cold one and having a good meal. Got a nice cousin for tonight. But um, yeah, probably about 10, 15 minutes walk away, so better get cracking. Just left the holly jungle and what you can see now is the quarry. Doesn't seem like anyone's working. Didn't know whether people work at quarries overnight or whether they all just pack up and go home. But uh, maybe some, maybe some quarries they do. I'm not too sure. I'm definitely not complaining anyway. Looks like there's a there's an access route all around which is probably used for a farmer or something to get to his field at the end which you can just see behind me but yeah getting there now not too far so you got the farmer's field to my right and basically what i've done is just work my way around the quarry around the edge of it going the way that the camera's going and it's brought me to this little corner of the woodland here. I'm gonna uh, get cracking now with the food because the darkness is coming in fast. So I'll catch you in a sec. Decided to treat myself to a gas stove. I'm not sure which model this is, but it's one of the Soto range, which um, I've heard good things about. So yeah, should be good. Got my little OEX pan. And this is what I'm gonna be having, some garlic and coriander naan bread. Got some balti sauce. I'm not going to be using all that because there's a lot of it, but yeah, it should be really good. And then I've got my meat, which I'm just going to get out now. Um, some diced beef, so I'll whack it in the pan. Managed to find a nice rock to sit on, and I'm just about to get cooking now. The darkness has come in so quick. Well, I guess it always does when you leave it last minute to try and be as stealthy as possible. But yeah, let's get cooking. been cooking away for a while now so 
Time to introduce the Bolty. Smelling so good now. Just about ready to crack open the naan breads and knock the gas off, I think. It looks really good. Just knock the stove off. Look at that. Tastes really good. It's a bit chewy, but I don't know whether that's because I've overcooked it slightly or because it's cheap beef, but I'm not complaining. It's nice. One thing I like doing is throwing the naan bread in just with everything else and mixing it all together. It almost reminds me of like having dumplings or something, but it's really good. All done and dusted. It was nice, but it was proper chewy. And I'm no Michelin star chef, but I feel like that wasn't just from me overcooking it. Um, it was from Iceland. Well, linked with Iceland, the food warehouse, I think it's called. And um, the frozen diced beef. So maybe uh, give that one a miss next time. But as usual, it's dark now, so I'm going to get my tent set up and I'm going to show you the uh, secluded little bush that I'm going to be camping inside for the night. The Soto stove that I used as well, I'll put the name on the screen. Um, it just added a lot of stability with the fact it's got four little arms on top. And yeah, can't really go wrong really. I like the fact that you can use a gas can as like the stand as well on the ground. And also the size of that is really good and compact and great if you want to, you know, reduce weight to go on stealth camps and stuff like that, or just pack size in general. I know it's like an extreme version, which goes up to minus 27, but it was only about six pounds. So it's good value and I just like the size of it. As you can see, it's pitch black in the woods. So I'll be putting up the tent in the dark again, which is becoming a trend on this channel. But yeah, luckily I'm only about five or 10 meters away in terms of where I'm putting it up. So I'll go put it up now. Show you the uh, little area before I put it up and we can chill out. It's actually a footpath as well that I'm on now. But if you see this bush here, I think it's a holly bush again. I'm going to be camping just inside that. You can sort of see in through the uh, branches. And if you come around this way, there's just enough room to crawl in. And inside there's a decent amount of space, so it should be cosy. Here it is on the inside. And as you can see, there's just enough room to put up a tent. So I'm going to get cracking now and I'll join you in a second. Just cleared the ground out, ready to put the tent down. I'll just have one final check now, just for any holly leaves or anything like that and we'll uh, get it up. Just finished putting the tent up. It's about half nine at night and there's literally just enough space to get the tent up in here. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll know that tonight I'm using a new tent. So I just want to say shout out to Nightcap for sending it out to me. It's ultra light backpacking one person tent in khaki, weighs around 950 grams and it's super easy to put up, just pegging the four corners as a minimum and put up your own hiking pole in the middle. I'm just using a Brasher carbon fiber one, which I just picked up from Go Outdoors. But yeah, I've not slept in it yet, so I'll let you know what it's like in the morning. But I'm gonna jump in now and crack open a beer. I'm all set up now inside, so I'll spin the camera around in a second and I'll show you the setup for the night and what food and drink I've got. First thoughts on the tent though is it's really good, it's super spacious. Usually one man tents are like bivvies or coffins and you have to leave your bag outside and stuff. But with this one, I've got plenty of room inside. It feels like a two man tent and I've got enough space to put my bag at the bottom. Um, so that's good, because I don't like leaving it outside. I know it's under like, the vestibule and it's dry and stuff and fine, but if I need to keep grabbing things from it and stuff like that, it's nice to just have it inside the uh, the fly net. So yeah, good so far. This is the bottom end. Just got my rucksack, my coat, and you can see my sleeping bag and pad. It's the same pad mountain equipment, but the sleeping bag's my summer one. I think it's called the OEX Fathom and um, it's got up to about seven degrees I think comfort which is around what it is tonight so should be fine I do have some extras like hand warmers and stuff if need be but it should be okay the mountain equipment pad I think is the main thing because that's got up to like minus temps I think so 
should be absolutely fine. And this is the top end, not a lot going on up here, just my usual pillow. And yeah, this is a food for the night. Got some Haribo Super Mix, Boost Bar, Toffee Popcorn. It's okay if it's a small bag like that, but when they do the massive bags, it's way too much with it being toffee. And some beers. Nice little Pilsner again from Aldi. And then these boys were from Morrison's or something, I think, or Tesco. But yeah, really good, so I'm going to get stuck in now. If you watch the Gastro Pub Stealth Camp video, you'll see that I tried to open a can of beer with one hand and it didn't go to plan. So I'm going to redeem myself right now. Let's go. Got the can. It's sealed. One hand redemption. Let's go. There you go. Needed to redeem myself. Cheers, guys. This Brooklyn Pilsen is decent, but I think I prefer the Aldi one. But I'm not sure why. Maybe it's because it's a bigger can or because it's the first beer I had of the night. So it's just more refreshing. But yeah, this is the last one now. So I'm going to have this, have my boost bar, and then I think I'm going to try and hit the hay. It's getting to like 1 a.m. now. And, um,. I'm pretty tired, so I want to get all cosy and I like to just brush my teeth and get out of the way so that I know I don't have to go back out again. It's like a nice feeling. Um, it's a bit of a pain when I know I've got to go back out into the cold. Just come out to go to the toilet and brush my teeth. I'm just going to go back in now, get the hand warmers cracked open, chill for a bit and then go sleep. What you can see there as well, under the leaves, is basically my rubbish bag. I just folded it around and buried it a little bit to try and keep the scent away, just in case there's any foxes around or anything like that to keep them away. Just thought I'd show you what my tent looks like from the outside at the moment. I've just got the lantern on and it's on the lowest setting. Completely dark in the woods and just a little glow coming from my tent. I did bring a tarp with me that I was going to set up just in front of the tent. So it's sort of blocking light from the walking path and stuff like that. But I just thought there's no point really because I don't think anyone's going to come here like at this time. And I haven't seen a single person since coming in. And even on the wreck I only saw one person. And they were just walking some dogs and they were right by the front end where, you know, you enter on the uh, off the road. So I just thought there's no point. All the lights are going to be switched off shortly. And then next thing you know, it's going to be daylight. But I'm going to get up early around 5am and pack everything up. So it's just my tent. And then I'll just show you what it's like in the daytime. And show you the quarry and stuff. And then hit the road. Currently 6 o'clock in the morning. Overslept. Classic. <laughs> Kept snoozing the alarm. I'm going to get all my stuff packed now, um, other than the tent, just so I can wait for it to get a little bit lighter and show you in the daylight, just before packing that up and then getting out of here. All packed up now and ready to go, other than the actual tent, which I'll show you in a second. Just wanted to let the light in a bit more before showing you. But yeah, just in that bush there, that's where I camped last night. And you can see how close the footpath is to it. So that's why I wanted to come late at night and reduce my chances of being seen. But I haven't seen a single person in here, to be fair. The only people I did see is the people on the path yesterday, which was the family and the old man, which is good. That's the way we like it. But um, yeah, I'll show you the tent in a second. And we'll get out of here. I'll show you how close I was to the quarry as well. In terms of the sleep, it was okay to be fair. It was a little bit cold than usual, but that's to be expected when the temp's still around five degrees at night and you've swapped out your winter sleeping bag for your summer one. But at the same time, I did have hand warmers and stuff like that, so it wasn't too bad. Plus it's nice to have a smaller pack size and feel more mobile for a change. In terms of weather last night, it was dry as a bone and pretty much zero wind. So it makes a change from it raining all the time. But saying that, when I've been on previous camps and I've been pitching up and taking down, I've always managed to do it in breaks of rain. So I've been lucky with that. But hopefully we're going into spring now. 
it's going to stay a lot drier um, when I'm coming out on camps and stuff. So, yeah, it's something to look forward to. Got my bag resting on the tree. There's just enough space to put the tent up in here, as I mentioned yesterday. And in terms of the tent, it's actually really good. I'd highly recommend it. With it being easy to put up with the hiking pole and just four pegs and it being out of first and lightweight. And it doesn't feel like a one man tent at all. There's loads of space inside, which I'll show you in a second. Can't really fault it, to be fair. It's defo gonna be a solid all rounder for me going forward. You can see that there's loads of vestibule space on it. And when both sides are down, you could easily fit like a couple of bags there or loads of equipment. So yeah, plenty of space. And I'll show you the inside now. I've thrown my bag just to one end, just so you can see how much space is in here. Bear in mind, it's a 38 litre pack. There's still boatloads of space. Bag's all packed. Just need to get my bin that I buried last night out now, add those cans to it. And then as always, rustle some leaves over the tent footprint and I'm on my way. All covered up. Time to get my bag and get out of here. So that's where I was pitched up. Here's the footpath. That's the uh, side view. And if I walk up here now for around 20 seconds, I'll get to where the quarry is overlooking it. You might not be able to see much there because it's super foggy, but we'll see. Yeah, it's really foggy. That's the rock where I had my meal. Yeah, I think it's too foggy. You can probably just about see a few things down there. Behind that fence is basically a big drop anyway, like 30 foot or something. Just making my way out at the moment around the perimeter again, the opposite way that I came in yesterday. Back down to the road, which will then lead me onto the main road. I'll try and get some shots of the quarry on the way, but it is super foggy as you've seen, so I'm not sure I'll be able to get any decent ones. But at least we got a good sunset last night and a good view of it then. As I was leaving then, the uh, woodland area, there was two dog walkers going in, probably about 30 seconds after I left, so good timing on that one. Didn't see one person in the whole of the woodland the whole time I was in there, so that's good, I'll take that. And um, probably about half a mile away from the main road, so I'm gonna crack on and um, 
I'm looking forward to getting home and having some cereal and a cappuccino. I've been home now for about an hour and a half, just chilling currently on the sofa watching some YouTube. I'm pretty tired, so I'm probably going to try and go sleep in a sec for like an hour or two, just to give myself a little bit of a boost. I've had some cereal, Frosted Shreddies, which is uh, what I'm binging at the moment. I tend to binge a specific cereal, or one or two for a while, before moving on to another one when I get bored. And at the moment, it's Frosted Shreddies. I've had a cappuccino as well, which is really nice. And all my tent stuff is currently drying. So I've got the tent in the kitchen on the rack, and I've got my sleeping mat and bag in the living room. The mat and bag don't really look wet, but I'd rather err on the side of caution before packing them away for the next camp. I'm going to put a video on in a second of the tent that I used last night, which was the Nightcat backpacking um, ultralight one person tent. So if you are interested in that or you're after a tent at the moment and you're looking around, yeah, check it out because I took it to the Rope Cheese, which is a place near me and got a few good shots of it. So you'll be able to see it better compared to last night when it was pretty dark. And if you are interested and want to look into it further, I'll leave the link in the bio so you can check it out. If you've made it this far, thanks for watching, guys. I do appreciate it. I appreciate. And if you can like, comment, and subscribe, um, it goes a long way. And I appreciate that also. And I'll catch you on the next one.